Hello, I'm the Resolute Cartographer, and this is the 35th video in my Fallout 76 Post Wastelanders main quest series. In the last video, we went to the DMV, we got our military ID card, we came here, and we joined the Brotherhood of Steel. Now, unfortunately, it didn't track our progress to that point. We do still have the military ID, but we're going to have to re-register for the Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, along with that, I'm going to show you the entirety of the interior of this asylum, with the exception of a single room, because we're not going to be able to enter that room until the end of the Brotherhood of Steel part of this quest line. But we're not going to let that get in the way of exploring the rest of it, so we're going to go take a look at it now. And in fact, there's actually two notes that are right out here outside the actual gate of this structure, and we're going to take a look at the ground here for Notice of Expulsion. Notice of Expulsion. You are hereby given notice to vacate the Allegheny Asylum. Effective immediately. Acceptance of this letter legally certifies your acceptance and understanding of this letter. Now, keep in mind that these were given to people who were in a mental institution. Some of them not necessarily needing to be there, but some of them definitely did need to be. So keep that in mind with that first sentence, or first paragraph there. If you fail to accept relocation, you may be imprisoned by local authorities. Failure to accept relocation includes remaining in your room past midnight tonight. If you have an emergency contact on file, they were notified of your expulsion and may be on hand to pick you up. You may wait for them outside the fence until midnight. After midnight, your continued presence will be considered failure to vacate the premises. Please refrain from causing damage to the premises as you leave. Legal action will be pursued and you may be sued for damages. If you have any possessions in your room, they must be removed at the time of your expulsion or they will be considered forfeit and destroyed. Our staff will not be present to help you carry your belongings. Thank you for staying with us at Allegheny Asylum, Mr. Benjamin Yates Rutledge, Hospital Administrator. So this place was shut down, uh, I believe because of abuses. Uh, in fact, one of the people that was here was uh, actually a investigative journalist who was kept here beyond, uh, against her will. Anyway, uh, in here inside the gatehouse, we have this note, Gate Guard Primer. Tourists and visitors. The main building is off limits. There is a zero tolerance policy for the following. Entering or climbing on the building, defacing the property, or graffiti of any kind. Prying open or breaking windows. Hunting on park lands. Use your judgment if something seems wrong but isn't on this list. Visitors who fail to comply with this should be ejected from the park. Wild animals. Docile wild animals like deer, beavers, etc. are fine. Leave them alone and don't feed them. Aggressive wild animals should be removed by animal control. They are on the list of important numbers. If that cow shows up again, call Howie. She's always getting out. <laughs> Former residents. Don't approach them if you can avoid it. Most of them are friendly enough, but you never can be sure. Treat them with dignity and respect and leave them alone until the authorities arrive. Some of them don't realize that the building is closed and others have nowhere else to go. If you're ever confused or not sure how to handle something, just call my number. It's on the list too. Okay, so there you go. Uh, we're now down, done out here. I'm going to grab those and that out of there. And with that, let's get inside. We'll take a look at the full outside, though, first. The Scorched are still here, so we're going to have to deal with that. But from a distance, you can see the artillery guns that the Brotherhood installed. Along with that, you can see that they installed their flag, and they put a big old sigil on the side of the building there. Uh, we can take a look outside over here. Where is this one that just made that? There they are. And, of course, that was the first shot of opening the game. And for a while, they had fixed that. At least I thought they had fixed it to where it wasn't the case that your first shot didn't actually do any damage. It just rubber-banded right back to the full health. But that seems to have uh, been unfixed. Okay, I think that did it for the Scorched out here, at least most of them. Alright, so coming around this side, we've got this little fenced area with a Brotherhood sigil on the top of it. And this is the Brotherhood's graveyard here at the site. Now, this may have been a graveyard before, but it's definitely one that the Brotherhood ended up using. They've got their flag up there and stuff. Uh, these are, strangely, they I, I really hope Bethesda will actually pay some more attention to these things. Because a lot of these uh, gravestones, when you can read them, say stuff about like the 17th century. And that is not something you would find here in West Virginia. Uh, anyway. All right, let's head back out this way. Yeah, they also have a little garden here with some aster growing in it. Now, if we come over here, there's another gate there. And then over here, we have a little fountain and a spot where a doctor seems to have been sitting. And there's a patient, I guess, with a wheelchair. This doesn't really make that much sense to me because the asylum was shut down well before the war. So I don't really know what's going on right here. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's head back over this way. There's the automated anti-air turret. 
Here's one of the entrances boarded up. If we come back over this way, we can get to the actual defenses that the Brotherhood set up. And so they built these walls, some of them out of wood, some using these concrete barriers. Along with that, they used parts of an old vertebrate. You can see they put their sigil on it, meaning that it was likely one of the ones they were actually flying around, because there are multiple uh, vertebrates you can find with Brotherhood sigils on them. They, uh, my guess is that those were all uh, taken out of the air by the Scorch Beasts. Sounds like there's, yep, there's another Scorch right there. I think that was it. Okay. Got some blackberries. We got uh, some Scorch Beast guano piles around the site. Those things show up because this place was attached by, attacked by the Scorch Beast so many times. Okay, let's head over here. And we're now within the outer barrier. You can get up here, and I showed you this last time, but I'll show it to you again. We got the Sonic Generator here. This is part of the Line in the Sand event. That's also what the, uh, the uh, anti-air turret was a part of. Basically, my understanding of all this is that, if you take a look at the map, the Brotherhood set up fire bases basically around the edge of the Cranberry Bog. Now, what they were originally intending to do was contain the Scorch Beasts, because they knew the Scorch Beasts were coming from somewhere in the Cranberry Bog. Basically, they were coming out of fissures, and they were trying to keep them contained here within the bog. Now, eventually, they developed this sonic generator here. And the sonic generator was actually able to draw the Scorch Beasts in using the proper uh, frequency. So what that meant was they didn't have to station people all around all of the, the borders of the bog. Instead, they stationed people all here at Fort Defiance. They had some over here, too, at the uh, east end of the Big Bend Tunnel. But they had most of their forces here at Fort Defiance, along with... And I, I'm getting off track here. They had some on at Thunder Mountain, too. They had most of their forces here at Fort Defiance. And what they would do is they would use this to draw the, uh, the Scorch Beasts in. They would then use the anti-air turrets, the knights on the ground, and they would shoot the uh, Scorch Beasts and kill them. You even have a couple of dead knights over here as well. Uh, we got the uh, computer here for the defense. We can take a look at this again. Perimeter defense system, attention all personnel, do not turn on the defense system in Sonic Generator unless ordered by the brass. Every minute the system's on drains the power reserves. Initiate pre-combat check. Active sensors. No enemy targets found. Automated sensors do not detect any Scorch Beast swarms in range. Perimeter defense system is offline. And obsolete functions. Error directory not found. Okay. Let's head in. Actually, is this something else here? Uh, we don't have the uh, military... Actually, we do have the military ID card. <laughs> okay. Artillery battery offline. Target tele telemetry not available. Attention, new personnel, please register with this terminal so the recon scope syncs with the artillery's forward observer automated system. New registration. Okay, there we go. We got the plan for the Brotherhood recon rifle. Okay. And then we got uh, artillery battery info. Whenever the perimeter sensor picks up a mass of scorched, grants wired up the artillery battery to spin up. The sensors aren't precise enough. A fire team with a spotter needs to go to the deployment zone and use a recon scope to mark enough targets for the batteries to fire. Once the targets are marked, book it. The artillery will kill friends and foes alike. Alright. Let's head on in. Alright, here we are in the lobby again. Uh, now we have this room off here to the side. This has been here now every time I've come in here. I don't know what this is all about. Anyway, we got this holotape. We listened to this last time. We'll listen to it again because I want to get all the lore in this video that we can. Recon notes to self. I knew it. I remember coming here on a school field trip. The walls are as strong as I remember. Paladin's gonna love it. Power lines run underground and connect up to Thunder Mountain. And so much space to grow into. But boy, is the whole thing a fixer-upper. And the smell. And there's the small problem of the ghouls. But we've got power armor and miniguns for that. Do I want to live in a madhouse? Well, it's better than being crammed in like Sardine's Adventure. To Silva out. Okay, so yeah, uh, De Silva was actually down here. She was one of the original scouts to found the asylum, and that's how they ended up setting this place up as a new base while they were still operating primarily out of uh, Fort Defiance up here. Or not, sorry, Camp Venture up here. Uh, let's take a look at this computer here. De Silva's terminal. Uh, De Silva's personal terminal. Grant, Grant, Grant. So Grant shows up and starts running all over, checking every room, the generator, the elevator, everything. It would be impressive if it weren't so exhausting. 
Then Grant starts asking a million questions. How many breaches in the walls? How many doors? Unsecured windows? Then he says we're abandoning this whole wing in the first floor. Has he trekked up to the second floor? But he says he can get the elevator running again and even install some of the military security stuff Squire Weber found on a salvage run. So in one day, everything we were planning for Fort Defiance is tossed out. Oh, except the name. That's the one thing Grant liked. So a couple things here. Uh, Grant Weber there. Uh, the Squire, sorry, not Grant Weber, sorry. Squire Weber there. Uh, he was the one who ended up leaving the uh, the Brotherhood behind, abandoning when he was out on uh, on watch by himself, because he was uh, he was one of the original members of Taggarty's Thunder. He viewed himself as a ranger, not as a member of the Brotherhood. He didn't want to have anything to do with the Brotherhood, and so he ended up leaving the Brotherhood behind. Uh, and then Grant here is of course Grant McNamara, who I believe is one of the first members of the first trained class of Rangers that came after the war when they were first set up at uh, Camp Venture. He was the person that got them into West Tech uh, when they first showed up at West Tech. Okay, let's see what. I was trading war stories with the guys on the roof last night. Then we saw the craziest thing. It was like some sort of bat flying in from Watoga, I guess. We thought there was nothing living over there, unless you count those murder bots. But the thing flew straight towards us. So we opened up with miniguns, and I think we literally scared the crap out of it. That was real, right? The Cranberry Bog has gotten so very, very strange. That was real. That was the first encounter of the Brotherhood with a Scorch Beast. First week down. The first floor is clear of ghouls. It's a disaster area, but with a little elbow grease, we each have our own room. It's a little scary at night. The others weren't raised with stories about this place. My guess is in a week or two, we'll be ready for Scribe Grant and the others to come over. The boys and I have started calling the place Fort Defiance. Has a nice ring to it. So we actually read those in opposite order, but uh, it's not a huge deal. Okay, so let's see. There's actually a new NPC at the site, and he is right over here. Uh, Don't look at me. Jonah Ito. Do you mind coming back later? I really just need some time alone. Forever, actually. What's wrong? It's... It's my sister. I, I thought I was over this already. She took her final stand here. At Fort Defiance. I should have been here with her. I'm such a coward. Stop moping and do something useful for a change. No! I'll decide if and when I'm going to leave this graveyard and Kaede behind. But you? You seem ready to take on this terrible world. Here. You'll make better use of this than I could. Okay, a couple stem packs and some medics. What is this place? This is Allegheny Asylum. Or rather, Fort Defiance. That's what the Brotherhood of Steel called it when they took up residence here. Fort Defiance. Defiance against the scorched threat. Well, just because you defy doesn't mean you succeed. <laughs> They're all gone now. Every last one of them. What happened to the Brotherhood? They took their last stand here. They thought they could drive back the Scorched, but they were overwhelmed. Do you dislike the Brotherhood? I... I don't know. How am I supposed to feel about the people my sister died for? If it weren't for the Brotherhood, then she might have left with me. I'd still be with me now. Or... Or maybe... She would have just found another cause to die for. What do you know about the Scorched? That they're monsters. They'll kill anything and everything that isn't them. And for what? What's the reason? What's the reason that my sister had to die? Sorry. It just feels so cruel. To answer your question, I don't know much. Aren't you worried about your safety? Why should I be? I've got nothing to live for anymore. When the Scorched came to Appalachia, I ran away. Kaede wanted me to join the Brotherhood with her. <laughs> but I was afraid to fight. Afraid to die. Now I see it's better to die for something than to live for nothing. 
I definitely mispronounced Kaede's name in uh, my lore video. Anyway, let's talk about something else. Okay. Who are you? Me? I'm a pathetic waste of life named Jonah. Why are you so hard on yourself? Because I made one too many mistakes. I can never take back. This miserable existence is my penance. What happened to your family? My parents are long gone. Killed during the war. My sister, Kaede, was a brotherhood knight. The best of them, without a doubt. She was so determined to see the world through to a better future. So she fought for it. Here, at Fort Defiance. Now I get to see the future. And she doesn't. The strange thing is there's no note of her anywhere other than what he says here. It's not too late for you to start a better life. Maybe not. But I don't have the will for it. I've always been weak. Just let me mourn in peace. Let's talk about something else. Gladly. I'll leave you. Thanks. Okay, he's got a holotape over here behind him. Hospital report, staff incident. Oh, not again. <sighs> Hospital incident report, resident psychiatrist, Dr. Kessel. One of the junior nurses has suffered a nervous breakdown. His assignments included patient 5A3, whose afflictions manifest in habitual self-harm. Patient 5A4, who, uh, while not violent, does aggressively grab and paw at whoever is trying to administer care. And also, patient 5B7, who breaks down into loud, unconsolable fits of crying, with no apparent cause or trigger. <sighs> that, and the constant attention and sanitary cleanup required throughout the day for all of his charges, was too much for the young nurse. We found him standing outside the door to one of the patient's rooms, carrying a tray of food, but moving anywhere. One of the other nurses noticed he'd been standing in place for over an hour. When he finally responded to our attempts to get his attention, he seemed surprised that any time had passed. During our exit interview, he broke into tears. He wanted to know if something was wrong with him, if he would end up here as a patient. I explained that nervous exhaustion was a common ailment, especially for hospital workers. Maybe after some months of rest, he could reapply for his job. That didn't seem to console him. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to explore this wing in its entirety, and then we'll explore the other wing. So let's uh, take out some of these uh, feral ghouls. A lot of feral ghouls in here. All right, um, wondering if we should take these guys out and then search. I think basically we'll kill anybody that comes to see us within the next couple of seconds. And doesn't seem to be anybody at the right at the moment. Okay, so we're good to check out this room. So we got, uh, looks like a, see it's hard to tell because it sounds like they're moving around a lot and I think they are upstairs, but anyway. So it looks like a little sitting room. We got a stereo. A couple of chairs and a television, a dresser, but my guess is this is uh, not used for people's clothes. Just because there's no bed in here. I don't see this as being someone's actual bedroom. Anyway, uh, we got, although there is a mattress out here in the hall, so you could always assume that maybe that was in there. I don't know. Anyway, uh, right over here we have one of the bathrooms. Um, and well, I mean that literally as in there's a bunch of baths in here. And you can find a few of these uh, throughout the asylum. Got a couple mirrors there. Uh, first aid kit there, but it's broken. Nothing in that. Some chlorine. Okay, I think that's acid. Um, okay. Are they coming after me? Doesn't seem to be the case. Alright, a couple more mattresses there. Got a gurney. Alright, okay. Definitely, there we go. Alright, so we got a, an actual bedroom here. No mattress on the bed. My guess is a bunch of them are... It's one of these ones that's piled up in the hall here. Uh, along with that, we got uh, a uh, duffel bag with a fat man and a stealth boy in it. Talk about a combination right there. <laughs> I'll take the stealth boy. 
I have no use for the fat man, really. I'll also take the HH3A capacitor off that guy. Alright, okay, and this one was just walled up on the end, but it is another bedroom here. With a little bedside table sitting here next to the bed frame. Alright. Got any more? Seems to be the case, but anyway, another bed here. Let's check out this room. This is a, uh... We'll call this lavatory. We got a sack with some junk in it. Come through, another bedroom. Okay, I'll take the uh, aluminum surgical tray there. The baby rattle, because that's full of lead. Okay, now we're being attacked. There we go. Probably going to be some more here. Just because that's a whole other area with uh, more of these feral ghouls in it. I think we're actually done in this section of the hallway, though, so we can move on. Okay. Um, yeah, we were just in there. All right, so we got a little sitting area out here, couches, a stereo, some chairs, and then over in here we have a little uh, like a nurses station. So we got a desk here for the, them to write reports on, a uh, spot for them to keep the day's medications. Come over in here, and we've got I think an infirmary sort of a thing, uh, maybe a, just a, a two bed room for uh, people who are maybe doing a little bit better than some of the people that have to have their own room. Because my guess is there are people that both get their own room for good behavior, and then there are people that have to have their own room because otherwise they're going to harm other people. Alright, let's see. Oh. Oh, crap. <laughs> Used up all that uh, laser ammo already, I guess. Although it's not the end of all my pistols, so I'll go back to that. Right, what are you? You've got another bedroom here with a couple of beds. Surgical tray here. Looks like this person was uh, suffocated with a pillow. The uh, fisherman's cat makes me think of one flew over the cuckoo nest, cuckoo's nest, so I don't know if that's maybe... And there's a birdhouse. Uh, well, not a birdhouse, but a cuckoo clock. This has to be a, a uh, reference to one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Anyway, uh, we got a basketball there. Okay. Let's see what we got in here. Okay, it looks like they're having a picnic. We've got a hot plate. It's a duffel bag with some cash in it for whatever reason, surgical tray, and a cooler with some vodka and boiled water in it. Of course, that's got to be just random food. We got another bedroom, this one with the man under the bed. And it looks like they drew some uh, drawings on the wall. Let's see if this spells anything. Red rum. Okay. Just a reference to The Shining there. Let's see. Two Jack Nicholson movies in two rooms on the same floor. All right, let's head upstairs. All right, overturned gurney, cart and some crates, wheelchair, more surgical trays. All right, well, that room's walled up. Maybe there's a way in. Nope. There we go. Another bedroom. With a uh, duffel bag with some cash in it. Ooh, short action. Sorry, short level action. Short lever action rifle. Uh, hopefully, I can actually use that. I think I can, but we'll see. Uh, we'll go over there in a minute. First, though, let's take a look through here. Can't follow the actual main floor because it's, there is no main floor. So, we'll go through this hole in the wall. Got another bedroom here. The uh, garden gnome. A. Golf ball bucket with no golf balls and a uh, kickball. And uh, a pair of handcuffs on the uh, bed frame. Let's see. Okay, I'll just jump here, I guess. Yeah. Alright, we got some more uh, blocks here. But. Doesn't seem to spell anything. <laughs> At least nothing that I can see. And then we got a uh, creepy baby doll. We go through here. Another nurse's station. Got more pharmaceutical boxes here. Uh, mirrors. Got some more ph pharmaceuticals. Got a safe here. With some ammo. Short combat rifle. Some junk. I'll take the Carlisle typewriter. And the microscope. Okay. Man. Okay, supply closet. Got a lot of straight jackets and uh, asylum worker uniforms. Okay. Let's see. Oh. 
Skarl Ghoul down. Another surgical tray. Another sitting area over here. This one with a little bit of the roof collapsed in on it. Oh, crap. Another one. out because it is keeping me alive that he can't seem to find his way over here. Of course half of my bullets aren't hitting. There we go. Okay. Got some... Oh, that was the... Okay, there we go. Take all that. Like I said, though, sitting area. Oh, there's a cap. Um, there we go. And a stand pack. Excellent. Let's go through here. More surgical trays. Oh, crap. More caps. And let's take. And my stem packs have unbound. Alright, let's see. Another bedroom. More wheelchairs buried under the rubble. Another uh, bathroom, in this case with showers rather than baths. Let's see, anything else in here? Well, other than the junk that's over here and the straight jacket. Got another straight jacket. Okay. Let's head over here. Another bedroom. In this case with a whole bunch of mattresses. My guess is those were put in as uh, storage. Let's see. Okay. Another bedroom. This guy's got some slippers here. Straight jacket on the bed along with a walking cane. Um, okay. Through here. Alright. This is the end of the hall on this side. But we'll, let's take a look around here. Looks like a records room here maybe. Some sort of a uh, nurse's area here probably. Got a uh, blue asylum worker hat there. How's that blue? It looks red. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, now this is sealed off. That over there on the other side is actually a Brotherhood of Steel area. Then we got another uh, records room here. Grab that surgical tray. And actually the uh, clipboard there. Let's see. Yep, this is the uh, Soul Survivor family calendar. For some reason, I don't know why. But half of the calendars that are in this game, they use the same exact model. As you can find on the fridge of the of the Soul Survivor's house in Fallout 4. I don't know why. And it's not the case that all of them are like this. They have two different models. One of them has this writing. One does not. Another battered clipboard there. Some caps. Alright. Uh, this door is closed. Probably went to a little balcony. This is a little... Looks like a nurse's uh, resting area. Straight jacket there. Yellow, that looks green, if there's anything on that. <laughs> I don't really think I understand the colors. Okay. Well, we're done on this end of the second floor, though, so let's head back over this way. Definitely can hear more feral gold waking up upstairs. I don't think we did check this out. Uh, another bedroom there. That should do it for part one. See you in part two.